haven't been able to ask you about the, the you know, cool for Chris Paul move. Just what were the, just the dynamics at play and why you guys made that swing? Yeah, I mean, I think um, obviously looking to improve our team and uh, felt like adding Chris gives us a chance to, you know, get better, addresses some things for us um, overall as a team. It also gives us some financial flexibility moving forward. Um, and, you know, most of all with Jordan, um, can't thank him enough for his contributions. Like, we wouldn't have a banner if it weren't for him. And uh, he gave us everything he had for four years. So, really appreciate uh, what Jordan gave us. I told him, you know, always be a warrior, always welcome back. And um, it's just one of those things. Felt like there was a little bit of a log jam in the backcourt. Um, and then you get into the payroll stuff. So, had to make a tough decision, but. Uh, had the opportunity to get a guy like Chris Paul uh, really was the, the difference for us to make that move. You mentioned the financial flexibility. What do you think that allows you to do and, and just how how necessary was that with the second apron looming? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it was somewhat necessary, uh, not completely because we still have a whole other year. But, you know, to get ahead of it, you're starting to see some teams do that right now. And um, for us, basically, to be able to do that and be able to foot what we feel like is improve our basketball team, um, that was that was the, the, the reasoning behind it. Um, but yeah, the, you know, what does that allow us to do? Hard to be, you know, hard to say at this point. But just to have that optionality and flexibility to a certain degree, where we're not going to be probably too bumped up against that second effort. What was the vision for Chris in terms of his fit? You know, yeah. The when the move was made. I think in terms of his his fit, you know, the one thing we thought about was winning. And Chris brings that. Go down the line of things that he does well. Starts with winning, then it goes to winning, and then after that it's winning. And then there's a few other things he does really well. So. Um, in terms of how it's all going to work out and how it's going to fit, uh, I just see a guy that every organization he's gone to, he's made better. He's left that team in a better situation. So um, even at 38 years old, 18 seasons in the league, I still, we still think he can do that. And so we're excited about it. Um, just to add his experience, his leadership, his toughness. Uh, it's a guy that's played multiple different systems, different coaches, and he's thrived in all of them. So uh, we feel really good about it. And, um, you know, I know Chris spoke yesterday, so I know he's excited. So it's, it's, it's a good thing for the Warriors. There are a few other additions that happened in yeah. free agency. I mean, how, what do you, how do you feel about the state of the roster as it is right now? Yeah, we feel good. I mean, I think coming out of um, the season, losing the second round, you, you know, you evaluate. You talk to your coaches, you talk to your players. Obviously, our staff meets and talks and goes through a bunch of stuff. So we feel like we've addressed some of the things we needed to address um, through free agency through the draft and obviously one big trade. And um, I like where we're at today versus, you know, maybe say a month ago when, when I met with you guys. How, how early in the process did you talk with Steve about bringing in Chris? And then how important was it adding someone like Corey Joseph as an extra ball handler as well? Yeah, I mean, process wise, honestly, this didn't really even come on the table until, um, you know, there's stuff with Phoenix about whether they're going to pick up his, his, his option or, you know, his, his, his contract. So. Just started kind of the wheels churning on that, and then he got moved to Washington, and um, you know again this, the opportunity came up, and um, it just happened right before the draft. So and Steve talked it through a lot with Steve, and um, he was on board. You know the players were on board, everybody got it. You know like I said, tough to see Jordan go, but in this league, you got to you know to get something good, you got to give something up. Chris was asked this uh, yesterday. Is there any sort of before you traded for him or? or after, was there any sort of consideration or talks about his role changing from what it was uh, previously in his career? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say we got into too much specific stuff, but you always want to feel comfortable that the player you're acquiring, you know, wants to be there, feels like he can thrive. And Chris is a guy that's played over 30 minutes, you know, in every season he's ever played. So um, as far as, like, playing time and role and all that, like, like he's going to play a lot. He's going to really help us, um, all that other stuff in terms of, play calling and how he's used and all that that's on Steve but um, you know we, we feel really good about the you know kind of the mutual um, you know uh, liking for, for one another. Do you do feel that maybe minute total wise he should have it decreased a little bit just from a usage standpoint? I mean I, I don't you can ask Chris that. I don't think that's what he's going to want to do um, I you know defer the playing time and all that somewhat to Steve I'll, ret I'll refer the load management stuff to Rick um, on our end, we feel like we got a really good player that's going to address some of the stuff you know that we're looking to do in terms of just experience, taking care of the ball, decision making, ability to run pick and roll. Um, Chris does a lot of those things that we we feel like can enhance our team. 
Just being in the organization the past few years, what have you thought about what Jacob Rubin's been able to provide? Well, Jacob brings, first and foremost, a tremendous amount of energy each and every day, um, whether it's working individually with players or, you know, collectively with the coaching staff. And, um, you know, his, his role and his responsibilities have expanded each and every year. And you know, he's earned that. And I, I really enjoyed watching the last few weeks, um, you know, kind of get this summer league group together. Um, I think they most importantly play hard and compete every night, which is great to see. And uh, I think he's having fun with it while also being challenged. And uh, it, it's, it's great to see guys that kind of start at a certain point in our organization and, and grow and work their, work their way up. So it's been, it's been fun to watch. What do you think of two-way wise at this point? I know there's not three available. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. And I think um, like last year, we were able to bring in a couple guys that could help. And um, I think we're looking to do something similar this year. Uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of good players out there. Uh, we have two you know, regular roster spots as well. So like where our roster's at right now with 13, and then just have an optionality and we'll see what comes up and available and maybe who we can get. I don't think there's any glaring. Um, needs to address, but yeah, I mean, there's some things we can, you know, sprinkle in and, and improve on the margins. But overall, happy with where we're at. Where do you do you still think it's necessary to get a traditional center, either in a roster spot or in a two-way, or is that? Yeah, I mean, but if, if there's like five open spots and you know if we fill three or four of them, I mean, yeah, I would think we're going to add somebody with some size. But we got to be careful with the way we play, the, la- the way the league works. Just bringing in somebody that's, that's tall, you know, you got to be skilled, you got to have feel, you got to know how to play. And I think we've learned that over the last few years. So uh, we'll always prioritize, prioritize that. But you know, the, the taller and longer the player is, the better. Um, some people that stood out to you at the summer league so far. Well, you know, we're always watching our roster players closely and getting a feel for, you know, the young guys that we've drafted. Obviously, Trace hasn't been able to play, but like really like what we've seen with Brandon. Um, you know, he hasn't shot the ball great, and he'd probably be the first to admit that, but those are, you know, that's something we feel pretty confident in him being able to do. But the other stuff with his decision-making, his playmaking, his rebounding, his toughness, um, like that, uh, as far as Lester, uh, he's he's been really good um, just through Sacramento all the way here. Been really steady, really solid, and that's that's a product of the work he put in and all summer long. So it's great to see him flourish and thrive. And then uh, with Guy, really really made some nice strides. Um, you know, I think his body looks better. He's gotten stronger, um, and his, his shot making and ability to put the ball on the floor and finish. Like we're happy with the way these guys are developing, and then some of these guys that we've kind of brought in on you know non roster stuff, exhibit exhibit ten type deals. Um, yeah, those guys have, have, have had opportunity to show some things here and there. So it's good to evaluate everybody, and um, we'll see where we land in, in, in a week or so after it's all said and done. How much of it, with Ryan was it to, to get Sarich? I mean, I know it was like an eight-day. Yeah, I mean, we, we had the intent to sign him. Um, we, we, if, we, if, if he does sign, we'd be tremendously excited. Um, Look, we've had a lot of success the last few years signing guys like they probably should make more than the minimum, and they've come in and they've been able to help our team. Um, and, and you know, we talked about guys like Belly and Otto, and even Dante last year, who was more than a minimum, but he took less than market value. So, yeah, it took some work, um, some convincing, but I think we're able to sell, um, you know, our program, our culture, and the way we play. And I think that Dario saw that vision and. Um, you know, we're really thrilled to have him. That seemed to be the one spot you felt like you guys really needed right to stretch for the capacity. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think, um, you know, we were a little thin in the, the front court, especially going into free agency, not knowing what Draymond, but we, we got him locked up. And then, you know, to get a guy like Dario, uh, it's hard for us to find the bigs that fit right in our system. I mean, obviously, Looney and Draymond have been amazing, but we want to add depth and versatility to that group. And I think we've done that with Dario. What were some of the challenges of navigating you know, the summer free agent market? Good question. I mean, um, you know, the good news is nowadays I feel like it just happens so quickly. So by day two, it's like the market's kind of market's kind of saturated and you know you're left with whatever the pieces are um i will say you know dario's a guy we called the first minute uh, the first possible second you could call a free agency and although it took eight or nine days you know we, we finally got him so uh, that was great to see but i think um as far as this this year goes like anything i learned you know sometimes you gotta be patient you gotta be patient and um you know corey was patient with us and uh we got i think we got good two good veteran players that will enhance our team and uh, really be you know, nice additions to the mix.
what made Corey an important piece for you guys this offseason as well? Yeah, I mean, I think his, um, you know, his veteran experience, um, you know, playing in Detroit the last couple of years, a team that maybe is not too on the radar, hasn't won a lot of basketball games, so you can't lose sight of, you know, what he can do for a team in terms of his leadership, his ball security, one of the top guys in the league, and assist to turnover. He can defend, the, he can defend, and he's a guy that's going to be willing to come in and do whatever it takes each and every day to, to help us. I mean, Chris and Steph will see a lot of the minutes at point guard, but Corey will always stay ready, and, um, you know, I think he was excited to sign here, and we were excited to have him. Chris and Corey are both really high as far as assisted turnovers. Was just that kind of steadiness really a point of emphasis for you this offseason? Yeah, I think so. I mean, looking at our team and evaluating how do we get better at, you know, taking care of the ball, fouling less, being more efficient in transition. Um, these are guys that, you know, I think can do that. And so you, you want to be careful about, like, completely addressing a need, but then maybe overcorrecting for something. But these are guys that I think will fit right in. Steve, you know, Steve was really excited about both guys. And, um, you know, we obviously do, you know, we get reference checks and all that. And everything was going about both. So we're, we're excited to have them. You guys don't make, you know, another significant move this offseason. Do you feel comfortable going into next season feeling like you guys are a title contender? Great. I mean, I think you know, anytime you, you go into an off and do an off season, you try and make you know adjustments and changes to get yourself back up to that level. Uh, first and foremost, you probably don't want to get a call from your star player's agent asking out. That didn't happen, so it's good. Secondly, you want to address those things, and I think it puts us in the conversation of whatever you want to call it, the top five, six, seven teams in the league. And that's that's all you can ask for. I think in 22, we were one of those teams. Certainly back in 2015, that was one of the things. So if you just want to, you know, you just want to try and be knocking on the door and come playoff time, have a chance. What, what are you looking for the rest of Summer League with this team and the team Summer League going forward? Yeah, I mean, we got, you know, two more games plus, uh, you know, the playoff thing or whatever that may be. So we're always evaluating through practices and stuff. and. Love to see Trace get out there. Hopefully, get to see him for a game or two. Um, but I think it's you know doing the Cal Classic where you get two extra games and you start right after the draft. I mean, it's been a good evaluation period. And then we'll roll it over to that, and we'll have our you know the rest of our summer development program through August and September. And you know, I think you know we're in good shape with stuff, but we always are evaluating and looking at our roster and seeing how we can be better. But now with you know as Anthony mentioned, like the two-way stuff, we got to fill that out and see where we're at with that. So always always observing. Any uh, initial thoughts on this in-season tournament? Yeah, I think it's exciting. I mean, I think uh, the league is always, you know, getting feedback and looking around to see what we can do better And um, as a league. And I think it's something that's nice to add in the mix without being too disruptive to the schedule. Um, you know, I think similar to the play-in tournament. The play-in tournament probably, you know, caused some caused some grief of what are they doing. And, and, and I think the play or the um, in-season in tournament could be the same, where it's just it works. You know, increase fan engagement. So um, I think we're all excited about it. Players, staff, fans. Uh, it should be a good thing. Now tell us how you really. No, I mean, <laughs> I think it's good. You know, at first you're sort of like, well, what is this going to be all about? Like, there's no history to it. Why are guys going to get into it? But I think it's done in a way that it's not too disruptive. And there's kind of a, you know, there's a there's a pot at the end of the rainbow, which is always nice for guys. And uh, I think it'll finish with a bang in Vegas here for, you know, whatever it is, a Final Four weekend. It's a cool idea. How was this rainbow negotiation? Good. I mean, we got him back, so you know it, it worked out. Um, I think we got to be pretty pleased. Um, I, I know Draymond going into it wanted to be back, and you know had had his sights set on finish his career as a Warrior, and so hopefully by you know signing him to a four-year deal, that's you know that's within sight. You, you know, if he plays more than that, great. Uh, but we're I think we're in a good position where we're having him where he's still at a, you know playing at a high level and give him a chance, him and Steph and, and Clay to kind of. I keep moving forward and competing. There has been kind of this like looming, like is it the last thing that drives? Even going back to last season, it does feel like during one contract, the you know, flexibility financially. It seems like you guys are committed to moving forward with this core for beyond the season. Yeah, I mean they're still playing at a high level. You know, you look at what Steph did last year. Obviously, Draymond, one of the top, if not the top, defensive player in the in the league, and then Clay. Man, I mean, you know, he he had a January and February that was like phenomenal is as good as any in his career so we feel like those guys are still playing really well if they weren't you know then maybe we pivot and do something different but um you know they're there's they can still do stuff and i think our big thing was getting them back and then also enhancing around them and helping us improve so uh, we're in good shape you want to so nick you're in with just named general manager of the phoenix mercury just want to get my hold on
Nick? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously was made aware of that. Nick, um, somebody I work with closely and really happy for him, like super exciting opportunity, um, unique, but, but really cool um, for him. Nick's from the Phoenix area, so the chance to go back to his roots and um, you know, it's a great opportunity and I know Nick's excited about it and we're thrilled for him and really thank him for, you know, his uh, nine years here, which have been, uh, needless to say, highly successful. Why don't you stay there?